Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Seva, and today we're investigating a quite simple yet foundational statistical test, that is the F-test, or Fisher's F-test, for the equality of variances. And this test is very frequently used in so many different econometric and statistical applications. But today, we'll be concerned with the most basic, the foundational application of the test. Consider you've got two samples of some data, and your question is whether the variances of x1 and x2 as your variables are the same or they are significantly different from each other. And the applications of that can be numerous. First of all, there are tests that care about whether uh, the variances of two data sets or data samples are equal or not. Um, think about uh, equal versus unequal variance t-test. By the way, we've got a video on that if you want to check this out. Uh, sometimes you might want to uh, answer some questions about volatility or heteroscedasticity for either financial or simple econometric uh, implications of that. Or sometimes when you are doing uh, machine learning or some uh, advanced um, model fitting into your data, and you might not have a very good and very intuitive um, statistical significance test, you might want to see whether the errors of a particular model specification are substantially lower than the errors of another, probably more basic model specification. So applications are numerous, and this test has also many generalizations and advancements um, on top of it, which is, for example, the uh, restricted F-test or the F-test for the significance of a regression model. It all starts here. So let's roll. First of all, to determine whether the variances are the same or not. Statistically, we just need to know them, isn't it? So let's calculate the standard deviations of our data samples of x1 and x2 using the simple stdv.s function. And then we can convert them into variances by squaring them. You could obviously use the var.s function straight away. That wouldn't harm anything at all. And for the sample size, as that determines degrees of freedom, we need just to count the number of observations here and here. So we've got two uneven samples, and that poses a non-trivial challenge for the estimation, as we'll see shortly. But first of all, the f-statistic, as we're using the right-tailed f-distribution to test for statistical significance, need to be the ratio of the higher variance over the lower variance. So higher of the two over the lower of the two. This is simple enough. We can just uh, divide the higher, so the maximum of the two variances, over the minimum of the two variances. And we'll always get an f-stat that is one or higher by design, by definition. However, for the degrees of freedom, in the uh, first degrees of freedom parameter, we need the uh, sample size that is in the numerator, so the sample size that is associated with a higher variance. And as a second degrees of freedom parameter, we would need the sample size that's associated with the lower variance. And this is something that we need to implement using if functions here. So if our first variance is the higher of the two, then the first degrees of freedom parameter is indeed based on the first sample size, so uh, 20 minus 1. And if it's not the case, then, well, the second variance is the higher one, and we base our degrees of freedom parameter on the sample size of 15. And that's exactly what happens here, as the second variance is the higher of the two. This particular uh, sample size is used to calculate the degrees of freedom here. And again, the usual degrees of freedom reduction is associated with the cal calculations we made. And for the degrees of freedom two, which is the degrees of freedom associated with the sample size with the lower variance, we'll need to use the if function very similarly. If the first variance is the higher one, well, then the second variance is the lower one, so we use the sample size of 15, and we use the sample size of 20 otherwise. And that's exactly what it allows us to do here. And to 
convert our f stat into a p value finally we'll use the right tailed f distribution f dist r t plug in our f statistic our first degrees of freedom parameter associated with the higher variance and our second degrees of freedom parameters associated with a lower variance and we close the parentheses and get a p value of 24.12 percent which is higher than 10 percent meaning that statistically these two variances although they are quite different statistically they can be treated as being the same they're not substantially different to warrant different treatment as per the f-test implementation obviously f-test has notable limitations um, in that it is quite sensitive to normality violations as again variance can be quite noisy when data is not normally distributed but for data that's close to being normal the f-stat is something that you should go for please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful in the comments below i make to see any further suggestions for videos in business finance or economics you would like me to record and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel look at support us on patreon thank you very much and stay tuned